Crazy mock draft, latest on Aaron Glenn and a new running backs coach on a Monday, Locked On Lions. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's good, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It is a Monday edition of Locked On Lions, right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your de- uh, your team, indeed, if I can speak, every day. It's Monday, February 6th, into Tuesday, February 7th. you got the Super Bowl and Media Day and all the hype this week. But for the Lions, it's simple. Senior Bowl, Pro Bowl, Aaron Glenn situation, Scotty Montgomery is here. All of that coming up on today's show which is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. And they have a special offer for my Locked On Lions listeners. You get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. You can follow me on Twitter at Derry Speaks, D-E-R-Y Speaks, at Locked On Lions on Twitter, the Matt Derry Facebook fan page where we post the podcast every day and you are watching, some of you, on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. So thanks for watching, commenting, checking us out here on YouTube. As I mentioned on the show today, we got a crazy mock draft to go over. we got a new running backs coach to talk about, the latest on Aaron Glenn. I want to do maybe some Senior Bowl more tomorrow than anything else, and of course the Pro Bowl as well. And that, that's kind of where I want to start. Um, and I'm going to be completely honest, and I always am with my listeners, and I try to be pretty transparent on the show, and... Oh, shout out to my man, Mike Vanderpool. Thanks for my uh, uh, Heart of a Lions fan t-shirt that I am uh, rocking today. I think if you can uh, see this. Hold on. For those of you watching on the uh, yeah Heart of Lions fan. There you go. Um, I, I want to be completely transparent. My job on this show is mostly to follow the Lions, entertain you each day with a podcast, the latest news. We put great guests on. And I want to give you great content every day. I do my very best to try and do that. And I think we've done a pretty good job. We've been successful. We've been with you doing Lockdown Lions since 2016, all of these things. But I got, I got to be honest. I did not watch one second, not one second of the Pro Bowl, the Pro Bowl games, the Pro Bowl contests, the Pro Bowl videos. I saw nothing. I couldn't do it. I am so happy for Jared Goff, Amon Ross St. Brown, Panay Sewell, and Frank Ragnow. I saw some clips through scrolling through my Twitter feed, but I just couldn't muster up any energy and any attention and any gumption to want to watch any of that this weekend. And I know there's things on social media. Should the, what was, how was the new format? What did you think? And my buddy Mark texts me, the great Mark Barbas. He's like, are you watching this? It's terrible. I said, no, I, I, I'm not. I, I don't know. I'm just done. Like I'm, I, I needed, I, I think this week between the, the championship games and the Super Bowl is good. Saturday, I was locked into Indiana Purdue basketball. My son was there. He was on TV. You could see him on ESPN. He, they stormed the floor and IU won. And I was into that, you know, as a dad of a team, I, my, it's my adopted squad, the Hoosiers. Um, and a lot of that, too, is because my Syracuse team is so bad. But it's just, I could not watch the Pro Bowl. I, I, I saw some highlights. I read some articles. I saw how much it meant to St. Brown to win the receiver contest or the best catch award, and he was jumping through into a pool. But I, I just can't do it. Like I'm really into players getting named to the Pro Bowl. I'm really excited that the Lions had four four representatives in Las Vegas this weekend showcasing themselves, talking about the team, taking selfies with TJ Hawkinson. I saw the picture of Ragnow, Goff, and Hawkinson. Awesome. I love that stuff. I'll eat that up with a spoon. Great. But the games itself of touch football or flag football, I don't even know. I just want to know who's in the game, who's made it there, because that's a recognition of the team. And so for the Lions to be represented, I think is great. But as far as watching, I can't do it. 
I have zero interest in the Pro Bowl. None. And they tried everything this year, the NFL. Eli Manning coaching against Peyton Manning. Um, they tried everything. I saw Josh Jacobs' quote from the Raiders where he's like, why are we even playing a game? This is all stupid, which I thought was funny. But I just, I, I didn't watch any of it. So I apologize if you're waiting for a Pro Bowl recap and Panay Sewell running through walls and being in contests. I didn't see any of it. I'm just glad the Lions represented very well and had four um, members of the team there all participating. And I'm glad nobody got hurt on the Lions. Miles Garrett apparently dislocated his toe running some race or something. Thank goodness the Lions, knock on wood, stayed healthy. So that's where I'm on the Pro Bowl. So if you're looking for Pro Bowl analysis, sorry. Locked on Lions is not your spot. Um, today there was some news. And I think this is important because the Lions kind of went a different route. Now, when I say different route, uh, what they've been doing lately is they've added so many former NFL players. And this man, Scotty Montgomery, who today reportedly became the Lions' new running backs coach, did play in the NFL. But this isn't like a household name. This isn't like a younger uh, assistant coach or somebody that has Lions or Dan Campbell ties. The Scotty Montgomery tie to the Lions, and he's the new running backs coach coming over from Indianapolis, where he was the Colts' RB's coach for the last two years. Scotty Montgomery's ties to Detroit are that he was a coach with the Steelers in 2011 and 12, I believe, as the wide receivers coach. And at that time, coached then Steelers wide receiver Antoine Randall L. That's really all I could find on Scotty Montgomery having any ties to the Lions is that maybe Randall L. went to Dan Campbell and said, we got to hire this guy. But with the Lions losing Deuce Staley to the Carolina Panthers, great move picking up a veteran running backs coach who, oh, by the way, wants to be an offensive coordinator soon. Interviewed for the Carolina Panthers offensive coordinator job last offseason when Matt Rule was looking to replace, I believe it was Joe Brady at the time, and has good experience as a running backs coach and will take that same job reportedly with the Lions. Scotty Montgomery is 44 years old. He has been a head coach before. He was at East Carolina uh, years ago. So he was a D1 college head coach. Uh, you look at the Colts running backs and you see the development of Jonathan Taylor. You see Naheem Hines, who's no longer there, but you see guys have success at that spot. Again, I don't mean to throw Dre Bly under the bus again, but Dre Bly's players did not perform in the secondary the last few years for North Carolina and their secondary was ranked 13th, 14th in the ACC. That's why I questioned the Bly hire. Other than, oh, great, it's Trey Bly. He's back in Detroit. Scotty Montgomery's got credentials here. With the Colts, um, with the Steelers, at Duke. So a pretty good hire, I would say, for the Lions to get Montgomery from Indianapolis. So he is going to be the next running backs coach of your Detroit Lions. And I like it. I think this is a good move, and it's somebody that comes right over from a successful program, albeit this year was not with the Colts, but um, and he's going to get an opportunity. And you got to figure he wants to be an OC one day. Well, if Ben Johnson leaves after this season, the Lions have somebody that has called plays before. Scotty Montgomery was uh, the head coach at East Carolina and was, uh, as their head coach, was also the play caller. So um, that is out there. All right, what's the latest on Aaron Glenn? We got a CBS mock draft we got to talk about, and we'll do that all coming up next right here on Locked On Lions. But first, we do have to tell you that Locked On Lions is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Life doesn't come with a manual. We know that. You want to talk to somebody, you're um, maybe going through some things, and you need to find a therapist that is going to fit for you. And maybe, just maybe, you want to talk to somebody online. You don't even want to leave your house. You don't want to be driving around anywhere. Um, you know, their betterhelp.com is really the best place to go. Everyone deserves to feel their best and BetterHelp makes it easier to get started. As the world's largest therapy service, they've matched millions of people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. All the benefits of in-person therapy, but it's more convenient, more accessible. And if you don't like your therapist, you can get rid of that person and get somebody else easily right there at betterhelp.com. Get unstuck with better help uh, learn more and save 10 percent off your first month of better of uh of a treatment at betterhelp.com slash locked on 
That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash locked on. And we got to tell you that we are so excited. Oh, my goodness gracious. Is this not the greatest thing ever to have? FanDuel is with us on Locked On Lions. Does it get any better than that? Uh, Super Bowl party coming up this Sunday, right? You got people over. You're hanging out at someone else's house. There's no Super Bowl party without FanDuel, America's number one sports book. We're excited about our new sports betting partner, as I said, for Locked On because of the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. If you're new to FanDuel, it's even better. Uh, they have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now. So you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet, meaning you'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet uh, doesn't win. That's uh, pretty cool. All right? Love the uh, Eagles this weekend. I just have a feeling they're going to take care of the Chiefs and win it again. So join FanDuel today and FanDuel to at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to claim your no-sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, Locked On Lions, Matt Derry with you. It is a Monday edition. What is the update on Aaron Glenn, future head coach, A.G. Aaron Glenn? Well, Aaron Glenn, the Lions defensive coordinator, is still the Lions defensive coordinator and will not be, we know this, go to Arizona. Reports have surfaced that the Cardinals have it down to three candidates, not Aaron Glenn. Lou Anarumo, the Cincinnati Bengals defensive coordinator. Mike Kafka, the Giants offensive coordinator. And Brian Flores, who of course, uh, of course was like the assistant head coach and linebackers coach this year of the Steelers, the former Dolphins head coach. So Flores, Kafka, and Anarumo will all interview this week once again with the Arizona Cardinals. So Aaron Glenn and others, uh, Raheem Morris and some other people, have been told that uh, their services are not no longer needed. They're no longer in the running for the Cardinals head coaching job. As I've said numerous times, Lions continue to win. That means their assistant coaches will be commodities for other teams, which is a good thing. But we saw the improvement that was made, especially on the defensive side of the ball this year under Aaron Glenn. We, you, you want Aaron Glenn back. You want Ben Johnson back. You want as many of these coaches back as possible to keep that chemistry going. So as of right now, the only job that Aaron Glenn is out there for and left in the mix for is the Indianapolis Colts. And we sit here on Monday, February 6th, and I'll be the first to tell you, I have no clue what the Colts are doing or where they're going. Uh, Shane Steichen, the Eagles offensive coordinator, was interviewed over the weekend for a second time. Aaron Glenn has been interviewed twice uh, by the Colts. Colts have interviewed a bevy of candidates. Many people in Indy still think that Jeff Saturday is going to get this job. Others have reported that it's not going to be Saturday and it will be somebody with head coaching experience. I mentioned Raheem Morris, who's in the mix for that job. Uh, Don Wink Martindale, the Giants def the defensive coordinator, is up for that job. Who knows what Mr. Ursay is going to do. But as of right now, Aaron Glenn remains um, a candidate for that job. If he doesn't get the Colts job, that's it. Everything else has basically been filled, and uh, he would be back as a Lions defensive coordinator this coming season. So we'll sort of wait and see on that, keeping our fingers crossed. He would love to have both coordinators back from a 9-8 and eight football team in Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn, again, for chemistry. And those guys did a good job, and I get it. You know, I, I know people in Indy, they're like, why would the Colts hire somebody who's, you know, the Lions defense finished, you know, 31st in this, 30th in this, 32nd in this. But the improvement that we saw, the adjustments that were made, and I know the Carolina game in Week 16 was a total bleep show, but mostly second half, that Lions defense did a very good job um, and held people in check. I know, it, it, you know, after the Carolina game, they did very well on Justin Fields. And then, of course, Week 18 against Green Bay. So um, that's the latest, at least today, on, uh, on Aaron Glenn. All right. Um, I saw a mock draft today that I think is absolutely crazy. And look, the Lions have five of the first 82 picks in this draft. And, you know, I've made this comment before, and I don't have any inside information about it. But Jim Nagy did say it last week from the Senior Bowl. The Lions coached the game 
last year. They had all their people down there. And not everybody goes to the Senior Bowl. And apparently this year there were a lot of head coaches that were absent from the game and not there to scout. But Jim Nagy made it a point that the Lions only drafted one player, Kirby Joseph, that played in the Senior Bowl last year. And they coached a zillion of those guys when their, their coaches, Deuce Staley and, and others, were running the game. So tomorrow we'll talk more about the Senior Bowl. But I, I don't know where the Lions are going to go at 6 and at 18. I have a feeling, you know, I do think this team needs a right guard. I do think this team team needs to be drafting cornerbacks. Um, I don't think there's any question about it. They're going to get an edge or a D tackle. But we got to see what's going to happen in free agency before the Lions draft. But free agency for the last couple of years for Brad Holmes has not been some giant spending spree. And even when Brad Holmes brought back Romeo Quara or brought back Charles Harris, or sign this guy and that guy. He still, you we know this, loves to draft defensive linemen. You know he likes defensive backs as well, and has taken them, whether it was Melifonwu the year before, um, uh, Kirby Joseph this past year, Chase Lucas. He will do that. But this mock draft that I looked at today, I was like stunned and so excited for. And I don't know if it's going to actually happen, but we'll have to wait and see. But we'll get to that from CBS Sports, coming up next. Uh, Valentine's Day is coming up, which means romance is in the air more than usual. You guys know that, right? You got to get your lady or your special someone something, right? So if you have date plans, dinner plans on the counters for for weeks on the books, that's great. But have you found the perfect Valentine's Day gift yet? Whether you're celebrating this day of romance, whether you're ready to pop the question, online shopping, easy shopping, when it comes to jewelry, there's only one place, and that is BlueNile.com. At BlueNile.com, you can find the perfect piece of jewelry for life's special moments or even create the custom engagement ring of her dreams. Blue Nile's diamond price guarantee also allows you to compare a competitor's diamond against one of theirs. Blue Nile can even meet or beat their price. Every order is insured and arrives quickly in discreet, pack- a discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shipping is free and so are returns. Right now you can save up to 50% at BlueNile.com. That's Blue, B-L-U-E, Nile, N-I-L-E.com. Go there for up to 50% off. That is BlueNile.com. All right, so mock draft time. This one from CBSSports.com, their first mock draft uh, this off season, I saw this today. It was written by, um, I'm going to give him some credit here because this was absolutely fantastic and I went crazy. Ryan Wilson, CBSSports.com. Uh, mock draft, Buccaneers trade up for Tom Brady replacement, Colts make a move, all of these things. So in this mock draft, the Colts move up to number one and Tampa Bay moves up to number three. Colts trade with the Bears and Chicago gets number four. Buccaneers trade up. To get to number three, Arizona gets number 19, number 51, first rounder next year, all this stuff. All right. But here's the thing. When it comes to the Lions, I went crazy. So in this mock draft, Indy takes C.J. Stroud at number one. Tennessee gets Bryce Young at number two. So two quarterbacks, two first picks. Third pick, Tampa Bay trades up for Will Levis. So you got Young, Stroud, and Levis off the board. That then moves Will Anderson and Jalen Carter down. Will Anderson goes number four to Chicago, so the Bears still get arguably the best defensive player in the draft, the edge and all-everything linebacker from Alabama. Then Seattle at number five takes Tyree Wilson, edge from Texas Tech. So I'm scrolling through this going, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Lions would be sitting at six, and again, this is just a mock, and Jalen Carter, 6'3", 300 pounds, would drop to number six? Could you imagine? There are some mock drafts that have Jalen Carter going number one to the Bears. If Jalen Carter fell to six, and you could put Jalen Carter along that defensive line with Aiden Hutchinson and Lee McNeil and Isaiah Bugs and James Houston, (laughs) the old Quara's like, wait, what? Wilson writes, quote, the Lions used the first of two first rounders to add arguably the best player in this draft. In related news, a defensive front that includes Carter and Aiden Hutchinson is a real problem for the rest of the NFC North. You think? 
Jalen Carter dropping to six would be insane. And I know I didn't have a great championship game. I, I, I know. Um, <laughs> I would sign up for that so fast. Jalen Carter from Georgia just moves bodies, speed, everything. Gets to the quarterback, stops the run, sets the edge. Sign me up. Uh, then the Lions at number 18 in this mock draft would select Deontay Banks, cornerback from Maryland. Junior 6'2", 205. Wilson writes, quote, Maryland teammate and fellow cornerback Jacorian Bennett got much of the buzz this fall, but Deontay Banks put together the type of season that will land you in the top 50 conversation. He's a fluid athlete who is also a big physical corner who can match up with NFL wide receivers. We've seen a lot of corners that get drafted um, ahead of Deontay Banks in this. Uh, Witherspoon from Illinois, he's only six feet tall, but he's a stud. Uh, Joey Porter would go number 10 in this mock. 6'2", uh, of course, from Penn State. Um, I'm trying to think if there were any other corners that were taken in this mock in the first round. Obviously, Devon Witherspoon from Illinois would be the number one choice, in my opinion. Christian Gonzalez, 6'2", bigger guy. Arizona out the pick after the Lions. Uh, Ringo from uh, Georgia, 6'2". But um, I've seen a little bit of tape on um, Banks, and I like what I see. And so if you went D-tackle or edge at 6, and you had defense in your first two picks out of 18, uh, sign me up. I would be all for it. Taking a corner at 18 would not bug me. In the least, if Witherspoon would somehow fall and he goes at 16 in this mock to Washington, if Witherspoon were to fall to 18 and you could get Javon, uh, Javon Carter, <laughs> NBA head in my, in my brain today, you get Jalen Carter and Devon Witherspoon, I would take it. But Banks from Maryland, I would take also. So Lions are in a good spot, man. A very good spot. All right, there's your Monday edition of Lockdown Lions. It's Super Bowl week right, week right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. And we are back again tomorrow.